Hello students, um, welcome to the color wheel and black to white um, gradient demo for today. Um, this is one of two demos that I'll be filming today um, in preparation for your color relativity and experimentation um, exercises. So um, as you can see here, I've went ahead and drawn out a 12 section wheel. And I've also drawn out my seven box black to white gradient. And how I did this was um, I've used my drafting tools, which you all should be familiar with from the last project. Um, I decided not to film that just because I wanted to cut down on time. Um, but essentially what I did was I used my compass, right, to draw a outside circle and then a smaller circle on the inside of that. I just kind of um, roughly sketched out um, kind of where these um, equal sections would be. I just kind of eyeballed it. And then using a straight edge, I completed those uh, sections. And I just all did this all with a, a pencil. Um, I tried to keep it as, as light as possible to keep my page nice and neat when I go to fill these colors in on my color wheel. Um, for the gradient boxes, again, I just used my straight edge, um, made sure that it was all nice and, um, and parallel to the border of my paper. Um, just remember that you are being graded on craftsmanship for this project. Um, so again, try to keep your color wheel and your gradient boxes as kind of clean and neat as possible. Um, I kind of just did a standard box here, but um, by no means do you have to do that. You can come up with some interesting composition for your uh, color wheel. Um, again, thinking about the notions of what we talked about with the color uh, exercises is you want to deliver this material um, in kind of a, a straightforward way. So while I do encourage you to get interesting with your um, color wheels, uh, still remember that we are trying to deliver some information here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start to fill this in. Um, it's happened to me in the past that I've actually gotten mixed up when I go to actually do this on what color goes where. So um, really lightly in pencil, I've actually marked out what colors go where on the uh, color wheel. Um, you know, sometimes your brain just screws up and you put something in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna start off with my three primary colors, right? I'm gonna start off with my red, yellow, and blue. And these are equidistant um, sections on my color wheel, right? So every fourth section will be a primary color. From then I'm gonna fill in my um, secondary colors, my orange, green, and violet. And then from there we'll go ahead and do the tertiary colors, the red, violet, red, orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, um, and blue violet. All right, so um, just to survey some of the tools I'll be using, um, I'm gonna be using some um, flat headed brushes here just to fill it in because I am working with more geometric lines. Um, that's always nice to use a, um, a flat headed brush um, I have some scrap paper here that I'll be using to mix my, my paints with. Um, you could use old Tupperware lids. Um, you could go ahead and purchase kind of those um, removable palette, um, paper palettes, that's fine. I have some water here just in case I need to activate my, my gouache. I have some paper towels over here just in case I need them. And then I have my colors here. So everything that I'm gonna be working with is going to be a mixture of just my red, my yellow, and my blue paint. Um, I'm using acrylic because I just had it at my house, um, but I do want you to use your, your gouache 
um, just a good investment um, to make for other projects that we'll be doing this semester. So I'm gonna focus on the color wheel first and then I'll get to my gradient boxes. Right on, cool. So um, again, when I'm starting off with my primary colors, I can just go ahead and take these right from the tube of paint, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my red. I'm just gonna put some red over here. Just gonna get some on my paintbrush and I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill in my section of red. Again, you are being great on craftsmanship, so just try and keep this as nice and neat as possible. Go ahead and do my blue. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and start to do my yellow. Okay, that looks pretty good. So again, we have my primary colors, my red, blue, and yellow. Because I have yellow on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll try the orange. Um, whenever you're um, mixing paints, you always want to add a color that has um, a darker value to a color that has a lighter value. So again, we were talking about value in the uh, presentation. Um, yellow is a lighter value than red, right? So instead of me adding the red, the yellow to the red to get orange, I'm gonna add my red to my yellow. We'll be talking um, about this um, when I do the um, do the the gradient boxes. But if you tried to make a gray by adding white to black, it's gonna take you all day to actually do that, right? So instead of um, you know trying to make something lighter by adding um, a lighter value paint to it. I'm gonna um, make a lighter value paint darker by slowly adding my, um, my paint that's a darker value. So in that case, that's gonna be adding my red to my yellow versus adding my yellow to my red, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna take some of my yellow here and everybody's paint is is gonna be different, you know, we're all buying from different brands, we all have, um, you know, different pigments in it. Um, so, again, much like if I asked everybody to bring their color red to the studio, everybody's color wheel is gonna be a little bit different. You're, you're kind of um, working in the, the parameters of the pigments that you have that exist with the paints that, that you got. Um, so for this, I wanna try and find an orange that is the midway point between these two colors, right? So I'm gonna just grab a little bit of red here. Again, just a little dab will do you. Start to mix it together. It's looking pretty good. We can see just from that tiny bit of red how much darker this pigment has now gotten. And that actually looks pretty good. I might add just a tiny bit more. Still looks a little yellow. I'm just gonna, just cause I wanna have enough. Keep mixing here. Mixing these together. It's looking pretty good. A tiny bit more red. Still looks a little yellow to me. Now we're starting to get somewhere. It looks pretty good. 
Yeah, that seems to be that seems to be a good midway point between these two this version of red and this version of yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and start to fill in my orange here. So now we're starting to see something here, right? Our, our color wheel is starting to, to, to form, start to fill in. So I'm going to do the same exact thing for my red orange and my yellow orange. I'm going to try and find the midway point between these pigments, right? Between these two. So because I already have some of my orange mixed, um, I'm just going to add a little bit of my red here to what's pre-existing. Right, and I'm gonna again try and find that midway point. That's looking pretty good. A little bit more. Uh huh. Looking pretty good. Yeah, that looks like a good midway point between this orange and this red. So I'm going to go ahead and start to fill this in. So now I'm going to wash my brush out real quick. And I'm going to dish out some more yellow and do what I did before where I added small amounts of my red to my yellow because it's going to be closer to the yellow um, spectrum now, right? So I'm just gonna do what I did before. Take some yellow here, add just the tiniest bit of red, and try and find that mid waypoint between my red and my, my uh, yellow and my orange to get my yellow orange. Oh, we're looking pretty good here, right? We have um, pretty much all my warm colors, right? Almost halfway with the yellow green, but almost all my warm hues done on my color wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing that I did for the orange. I'm gonna try and find the midway point between this particular blue and this particular yellow to get my green. Same deal. I'm going to find the midway point between this blue and this green. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and find my yellow green. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do my violet, which again, I'm finding the midway point between this particular red and this particular blue. Um, with the violet, um, just given the nature of the gouache um, it's probably not going to be this kind of vibrant the vibrant like right out of the tube uh, violet um, but again we're working within the the parameters of the pigments of paint that that we have so whatever that violet is is just how it is on you know with these particular paints um, so again I'm going to find the midway point between these two colors Okay, right on. So again, I'm going to continue doing what I was doing, finding the midway point between this violet and this red. Last but certainly not least, I'm going to find the midway point between this violet and this blue. Okay, folks. Um, so now we can see I have my completed color wheel here. I have my primary secondary and tertiary colors in between that. Um, just take your time, have fun with it. Um, I haven't made a color wheel in a really long time and I found it very soothing right now. Um, so just again, everybody's paint is gonna be different, right? Um, so everyone's 
color wheel is gonna look a certain um, unique way depending on, on their situation. Um, so just please take your time and um, again, this these, these exercises are, are all about really looking, right? Really trying to study the colors that we're, we're working with, right? Um, be like, this needs a little bit more red. This needs a little bit more blue to find that perfect 50-50 split between these two particular colors. So again, just take your time and uh, have fun with it. We're now gonna jump to the um, black to white uh, gradient boxes. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill in my gradient from black to white. Um, much like I was saying when we were working on our color wheel in terms of um, adding um, lighter and darker valued paints, um, you always want to add your black to your white. You rarely, if, if ever, want to add your white to your black because it's going to take a really long time to lighten up such a dark uh, pigment, right? Um, Again, black is the darkest value, white is the lightest value. So to lighten up a black really takes a lot of white. Um, we'll see how it goes with, with this, but um, what we're gonna start with is obviously filling in our white, filling in our black. Then we're gonna find the midway point between those, those, those two colors. It can be hard to kind of gauge the entire spectrum starting from white and adding this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the midway point um, between our white and our black and then start to fill in from there. So obviously I have my white paint right out of my tube here. Um, doesn't really matter which way you go. Uh, may seem a little um, silly painting white on a white sheet of paper, but um, this is the exercise. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my 100% black. Wash out my brush. And again, now I'm gonna try and find the midway point. What is the gray that's the midway point between the white and the black, right? So again, I'm gonna take some white paint and I'm gonna add black extremely slowly to my mixture because it's gonna darken it up really quick. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and start to mix it in. That's looking pretty good. I think it could be a little bit darker, right? This is definitely leaning more towards this side of the spectrum. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more black to it. Starting to get somewhere, maybe just the tiniest bit more. Tiny bit more. I'd say that's a good half gray between this white and this black. Might be a tiny bit light. Again, just this is all about using our eyes and our brain to come up with these color conundrums. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in and see how it looks. Okay, that's looking pretty good. This looks like a good medium gray between my pure white and my pure black. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, because I already have the, the gray kind of started, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my two um, gray to black areas. Obviously this one is gonna be darker than my 50% um, uh, gray. And then this one's going to be, um, again, closer to black than um, this gray, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead again and add some black. Again, I don't want to add too much. I want to work really slowly. So this to me actually seems too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to fill in this space here. Okay, now we can see we're starting to get somewhere, right? Um, we have a pretty convincing gray to black um, gradient, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing that I did over here. Find the two um, colors that would fill in this side of the spectrum. All right, and there we have it. Looks looks pretty good. I haven't done one of these in a while, but um, yeah, this was this was fun. Um, so here we have pretty much everything we should need to start to mix color. Right, this is a great exercise to be reintroduced to these ideas and these practices. Um, think about when we start to mix our hues with our values. Right, thinking about. Um, full chroma, thinking about adding tone, tint, and shade to these colors, what would those color combinations start to look like, right? Um, these are all things that we'll be using as we continue to explore color um, throughout this project and throughout the semester. Um, from here, we can start to plan out all of our different color um, schemes, you know, um, complementary, split complementary, analogous, all that stuff. Um, so with this, just please take your time. Again, we are being graded on, um, you know, craftsmanship is a part of the grade. I want these to look nice and neat. Um, again, we are humans. We're not working from, uh, from uh, Photoshop on these. So again, there's going to be some, some character to them, but that's okay. Um, but just, again, think about craftsmanship. Think about the composition of these, um, of these, exercises and uh, I look forward to seeing what y'all come up with. I'm going to now be filming the demonstration on um, the Albers uh, color relativity exercise.